Hello friends, this video on Organic Chemistry Basics Part 51 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's do estimation of sulfur. El sulfur also use Harrier's method. In this case, sulfur is heated with sodium peroxide or nitric acid. Sulfur. So the sulfur, whatever is present, it will get oxidized to sulfuric acid. Correct. And it is precipitated as barium sulfate by adding BaCl2 in the water. And now we have the BaCl2, this precipitate is filter washed and dried similarly to AgCl2 and we can find the percentage of sulphur. Correct. So as I told you, my sulphur is first reacted with sodium peroxide or HNO3 nitric acid, right. What you get is sulfuric acid. See, this is a sulfur with we have water and oxygen also here, right? Little liquid actually, right? So you have water, oxygen, you have sulfur. You react with this nitric acid, you get sulfuric acid. Now you have the sulfuric acid. You react with barium chloride. You get barium sulfate, and this is what it precipitates out actually. Plus this guy you can filter, you can dry and then from this you can find actually the composition of sulfur. Correct. So let's take one example on this. So in the sulfur estimation, this gram of organic compound gave this gram of barium sulfate. So I have my organic compound and this gives barium sulfate. I have to find the percentage of sulfur. So we find the molar mass of barium sulfate, it is nothing but barium is 137, sulfur is 32, oxygen is 16 into 4, 64, you add this, 33 is my molecular mass of barium sulfate. So if I have got 230 and sulfur is 32, right? So the, the equation if you see is from sulfur only you get barium VASO4, this is my balanced equation actually. So if I have got one mole of sulfur, from one mole of sulfur, I will get one mole of barium sulfur, right? So one mole of barium sulfate is what? 233. So 233 grams of barium sulfate, if I have got, this implies I have one mole, that is 32 gram of sulfur in organic compound. Hope you understand this. 233 grams of barium sulfate implies if I have got as output, this implies 33 grams of sulfur in organic compound. So if I have got 1 gram of barium sulfate, this implies 32 by 2, 33 grams of sulfur in organic compound. But I have, how much I have got? I have got 0.4813 grams of barium sulfate. So if I got this much, this implies this value into 0.4813 grams of sulfur in organic compound. This is, this is what I have sulfur in organic compound. If I have to find the percentage of sulfur, what you do? You take the whole value, divide by the weight of organic compound. So you take this, it's nothing but 32 by 233 into 0.4813 divide by this mass of this organic compound into 100. You solve this, you get 42.10 percentage. And that is the percentage of sulfur in this organic compound. Similar to sulfur, we can do quantitative estimation of phosphorus also. So in this, what we do, we take some organic compound of known mass, we heat this with nitric acid and you get what? You get phosphoric acid. So let me write the reaction for this. Phosphorus. You heat with nitric acid, you get H3 pure. Correct. Now it is now precipitated as ammonium phosphomolybitate by adding ammonia or ammonium molybate. That is one way. Or the alternative is what you can do is you have this phosphoric acid, right? You want to precipitate it as this by adding magnesium. So I'll take this reaction. So I have my H3PO4. I let add magnesia mixture. 
so i'll get mg nh4 po4 this guy right and this if i heat actually on ignition this guy will heat if i heat this so let me write this reaction here or it will let me write here only mg nh4 po4 if i heat this i get mg2 p2o7 plus i get ammonia and i get correct this is what i get and from this i can find the concentration of sulfur because i have got this compound and this is how sulfur looks correct so there are two methods as i explained so if you use the first method the the percentage of sulfur will come out to be this same thing same logic we have applied this is the mass of sulfur this was the the whole mass of the complex compound this is again the same thing here right so using that uh, logic you will see that my percentage of phosphorus in first case if you are using the first option where you get this this compound nh43po4.12moo3 you have to use this formula or if you are using if you are precipitating out mg2p2o7 because you have to precipitate something right then only you can dry it and calculate the uh, percentage of phosphorus so either you can precipitate this guy or this guy right so if you are going for the magnesium approach you get magnesium approach you get this and then you use this formula if you are going for this approach yes you use this formula correct let's estimate oxygen so generally you know how to find all the other compounds nitrogen oxygen or in nitrogen phosphorus chlorine so you generally we find all the other compounds and then we subtract them from 100 whatever you get is the percentage of oxygen that is the general process but there is a direct method also right because this is a tricky one so we have we have carbon hydrogen nitrogen chlorine so you have these things or sulfur also in a particular compound so you have to find oxygen also so first approach is you find the concentration of all these subtract with 100 you get oxygen right because total percentage of oxygen is 100 that's a very cool approach the diet method is what you do you take organic compound right and you heat this in nitrogen gas right now you pass this because you you will get oxygen right you you heating is a nitrogen gas whatever oxygen you get and other gas you get this oxygen what you get you pass with the red hot coke it will form carbon monoxide right and now that is also gas right it's very difficult to measure so what we do is we you pass this guy with i2o5 iodine pentoxide so here you get carbon dioxide and iodine gas so either from iodine or from carbon dioxide any of these you can actually find the concentration of oxygen correct so if you see if my carbon dioxide let's suppose form is m1 gram right and then you have this relationship by this 44 gram of carbon dioxide means 32 gram of oxygen because this guy has how much this guy is my total carbon dioxide is 44 out of this this was my 12 and this is 32 16 to 2 so if you take carbon dioxide that means if i get 44 gram of carbon dioxide it implies i have 32 gram of oxygen right so with that if you find this percentage you'll get percentage of oxygen to be this guy 32 by 44 into m1 by m2 where m1 is the mass of carbon dioxide form correct thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again